What we're going to be going over here is governmental accounting for the special revenues fund. Now the special revenues fund, that fund falls under governmental funds here. So governmental funds, you may be familiar with the general fund here, capital projects fund, permanent fund, and so on here. But what we're going to look at is the special revenues fund here. Okay, so let's go and look at that. So the special revenues fund here is referred to as a public purpose trust here. And it's set up for collecting revenues that are earmarked for a special purpose. And they're restricted for a use, a restrict, the use is restricted on those uh, special revenues funds for that specific purpose. And it would be obtained from a specified source here. Those revenues would have to be obtained here from whatever source that's specified. You're going to set up a separate special revenues fund for each purpose that you intend it to be used on, and all revenue coming in has to be used for the particular funding purpose here. Okay, so when we're talking about these special revenues funds, we could have non-exchange transactions. That would be taxes and grants here, and then we'd also have uh, that would be where you're going to issue, uh, receive taxes and or receive grants, federal and state grants here. And then you can have the exchange transactions here. Those would be like service fees that the municipality or a city charges for particular services. So first looking at our non-exchange transactions. Those would be like a hotel room tax to promote tourism. So you can see our source here is going to be, a funding source is going to be that hotel room tax that we collect here. And the use or the restricted use or the purpose here is going to be to promote tourism. And then we could have like federal and state grants for community development. So again, our source would be either a federal or state grant. And then our specific or restricted use would be whatever we whatever was specified here for uh, the particular community development project here. And then you could have like gas tax here for highway maintenance. And then a specific federal or state grant for education. And then you'd have a, another item might be the resources for a food stamp program and so forth here. So you can see here the non-exchange transactions, those are really Tax, uh, uh, tax, specific taxes are collecting for a specific uh, use here, or grant, a specific grants that are re, uh, received here from federal or state grants for a specific use. Now looking at the exchange transactions, again, those would be service fees charged here. And those fees could be um, charged here for using, like if the city has a golf course, charge some fees for using the golf course here. And then you could have garbage pickup, or snow removal, or other city services and fees here. So these exchange transactions, those are fees charged here that the city has to charge to maintain or operate these particular, service, particular services here. Now, the only difference between the special revenues fund and the general fund is that the revenues in the special revenues fund here is earmarked for a special a specific purpose here that we went over. Now the journal entries in the account names are the same as or very similar to that of the general fund. So if you're familiar with the general fund, you'll understand the journal entries or the accounting here for the special revenues fund. And again, with the special revenues fund, as it is with the general fund, you're going to use budgetary accounting. That's for your uh, is source, source inflows, outflows, and appropriations, and so forth. And you also use the encumbrance control system for uh, any uh, commitments or purchase orders or commitments that you make here through that special revenues fund. And then again, you use modified accrual accounting here in the special revenues fund, as well as the general fund. Okay, so let's go and look at some examples here. Okay, for our special revenues fund, uh, We'll just look at some revenue examples here, just to get a basic understanding of what, how we, how those fund, how those revenues would be handled here in our special revenues fund here. Now, the other accounting would be very similar to the general fund. Okay, so let's look at the first case here. We have a whole hotel room tax that's collect, collected here, and the key is it's restricted here for a specific purpose. So, say for example here. You have some cash collections for the period here of $100,000. So that you would debit your cash here for $100,000. Remember, it's going to have some restricted uses here. You just can't spend it in any, it's got to be restricted to that particular 
uh, purpose here. Hotel room tax, for example, we talked about for promoting tourism. So your cash that's going to be spent out of this account here, the special revenues funding account, can only be spent here for uh, that promoting tourism. And then just a note here on our revenues here, nothing special here, but this is what you'd have what is expected here for the current year here, for example. So our revenues, we would credit it here for $92,000. That's what we expect here for the current year here. And then we had some taxes receivable here. Again, uh, from the previous year here, we had $8,000 worth of taxes receivable for the previous year here, but we received them here in the current year of $8,000. So that's where we got our yeah, total $100,000 in cash. Uh, we had for the $8,000 here receivable from the previous year here, but what we realized, plus the $92,000 here, we realized here in the current year here. So key is revenues here for the particular period, that's what you're going to really be expected here for the current year here, those revenues. But the total cash over here, uh, that could be used here for whatever the specific purpose is. Okay. Now let's go down here and just look at uh, a federal food stamp funding here. That would be like a it'd be a federal or a federal grant here, basically for distributing food stamps here. So, uh, looking at it from the start here, we received those that funding was received by the state government here. So, what the local government would do here, the municipality that would be receiving those those food stamp fundings and distributing it here, when it's received by the state government here and there, it's earmarked for the particular uh, uh, government or the locality here that's going to receive those food stamps. That uh, locality here, the local government, would record in their special revenue fund as deferred revenue here. They're going to, that we're going to be looking at receiving $100,000 worth of uh, uh, federal funding here for the food stamp program. So local government records the special revenue as deferred revenue until the, in this case, the food stamp coupons here are distributed uh, and then you're going to recognize revenue and expense you're going to realize it here so the rule is here you're going to recognize revenue after the dollars are spent here on that on for those food stamps or the dollars here are given to the recipients here the food stamps and then they would in turn spend them but as far as the local government they would recognize this as revenue expense after they distribute those food stamps here. And that would be similar for any other federal or state grant here. And this rule here, recognize the revenue after the dollars are spent or distributed here. So looking at our case here for state here is going to give the local municipality here, uh, our local jurisdiction here for that food stamp program, they're going to give them $100,000. So local government here credits their deferred revenue here four hundred thousand dollars so they're not going to recognize any revenue until that distribution here so credit deferred revenues for a hundred thousand and then a food stamp uh, coupons here debit that here four hundred thousand dollars the funding that they're going to absolutely get here from the uh, a fed state and fe or distributed uh, from the federal government through the state government and back to them here okay so now when they actually distribute those uh, food stamps to the recipients here. So in this case, now this is where they're going to recognize their revenues here and say only $90,000 worth of the 100,000 were distributed. So go to our revenues account here and credit that here for $90,000. I say after the dollars are spent. That is spent after the distribution here by the local government here. Uh, we're not waiting for the recipients to spend the dollars. It's just that the local government distributes the food stamps here and that's what I'm talking about after it's spent. So we got the credit here, revenues we credit here for $90,000, and then the deferred revenues, well, we would have debited that here for $90,000. So after the distribution here, reduce your return, deferred revenues by the amount or the value of that distribution here, and then you, uh, so you debit your deferred revenues, reduce your deferred revenues, and then you actually recognize them as revenues here, credit it for $90,000. And then for your expenditures, again, the same thing as your revenues here. After you distribute those food stamp coupons here, you would credit or reduce your food stamp coupons here by $90,000, and then you would go and debit or recognize your expenditures here, uh, debit them 
by ninety thousand dollars. So that's after they're distributed here. So after the after the dollars here are essentially spent here by the local government here, then you recognize your expenditures. So just remember here, their deferred revenues up on uh, it's deferred revenues when you're it, what you're ex expecting to receive here from either state or federal funding, and then they don't get recognized as revenues until they're the actual distribution here or after the dollars would be spent here, essentially spent here by the local government. So that's the rule that you're going to use here. You recognize revenues and actually expenses or revenues here until the dollars are spent. Again, this example here is similar for any federal or state grants. And then finally, let's just go down and look at our service fees here, those exchange transactions here. And what you would do here, let's just look at the case here where we'll just look at our what we're looking at our revenues here versus our cash collections here. So the key again, our revenues here, you're not going to recognize any uh, revenues here until the services are provided here. And we're talking about those non-exchange transactions. That could be like garbage pickup, that city golf course fees here, snow removal, removal here, and other city services here. So in this case, these service, these revenues here are again for service fees, and you're not going to recognize or credit your revenues here until the actual services are provided. In any uh, services that are that you received here in cash or receivables, they're going to any. Uh, Unprovided services that are yet to be provided are going to be deferred revenues here. So let's look at the case here. So we had some cash collections for the period here, uh, debited our cash here for $370,000. That was an actual amount of cash that was collected here. And along with that, we still have accounts receivable for, again, our service fees here. We debited that here for $10,000. Cash is not received yet here, but it's, an, it's set up as a receivable of $10,000. So that's our receivable here. So we're gonna, the difference goes into between our cash collections here and our accounts receivable, what was that? 370,000 here plus accounts receivable at 10,000. So we have a total amount here between our cash and our accounts receivable of $380,000, but we only earned 360,000. The service was were provided for only $360,000 worth of the actual cash and accounts receivable that we have for 380,000. So the difference here, uh, the difference is going to give us the deferred amount here of $20,000. So our deferred revenues, those would be the unearned revenues here. We credit it for $20,000. So just remember, deferred revenues here, that's the services that are yet to be provided here and our revenues here that we recognize are only for the services that are provided. And that's really following our modified accrual accounting here. Okay, so that's about what we're going to, we just summarized our exam, few examples here on revenues when we were talking about this special revenues fund. And just remember, uh, we went through the basic examples here. Uh, what with recognizing some of our revenues here, what we uh, would do under really modified accrual accounting. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic.